Walt Markers have been with us for quite a long time in audio editing in Cubase, and generally they're pretty good. They allow you to bypass the classic workflow of cut, place, time stretch, and patch together by just grabbing part of an audio event and moving it where you want, and it will take care of all the stretching for you. However, they have had limitations, and the main limitation, certainly for me, is that it's not been possible to edit multi-track warp markers all together and end up with a coherent result. All of that changes with Cubase 12, and we're going to take a look at why in this video. So let's take a look at a few of those new features. Now, the first one is that it's possible to do warping in the project window. So this means that a lot of the kind of day-to-day -day warping that you need to do, you can do directly in the project window. But most importantly, it means you can affect multiple parts, tracks, etc., events really at the same time. Now, this I think is really, really useful. So here I have some drums which are downloaded from Mark Midwinter. So link is in the description and they are nice, but they're not in time. So if I just stick the first bit on, we just have a quick listen. You can hear it starts out okay, but then it drifts a bit. They've not been played with a click, I don't think. So, you know, that's fine. But let's say we want to get them in with a click. Now, if we wanted to do this previously, it was a fairly tedious process, which typically involved cutting up multiple parts, time stretching them individually, etc. We couldn't do easily the kind of editing that we now can. It's now possible to just do this straight in the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on group editing and also phase coherent audio warp, which we're going to look at a bit later. So because we've got group editing turned on, as soon as you edit one of them, they will all get edited, which is really useful. So just going to listen through. I'm going to get rid of the left zone so we can see it a little bit easier. And... Right, so that there, that's where I want bar three to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix bar two in its current position. It says new version, and then I'm just going to take this. So I think it's that should be bar three. I'm just going to move that earlier. And now hopefully. And we've got a similar thing with this where... So this should be bar four. And again, I can just drag that. It's snapping appropriately. The middle of bar three sags a bit, but we'll deal with that in a second. So let's just move that. So I think that just needs to be there. And now. Etc. So we could fix this and, you know, if we needed to fix this either to a tempo or to another performer, which is something I've had to do quite a bit over the last couple of years with lots of people working remotely. And maybe just slipping in time here and there where they wouldn't do when they were locked in with people uh, playing in a room. So this is really, really useful. I'm already finding this is just saving me loads of time. So this is one of those things where you could do it another way, possibly not as well and without the phase coherence working. But this has uh, been really great for me. Now, another area, which is pretty cool, which we're going to look at now, is being able to transfer warp markers between events. So here we've got the two overheads from that previous example. And we can see, obviously, they, they go out of time the same way the others did. But I can just work on these individually. So let's say I'm just going to fix that and then just get this. That just needs to be a bit earlier. And then that one needs to be a bit earlier. And so does that. So that's the kind of thing there. I think this now, if we play this on its own, So that's that's in time, and obviously this one isn't. If we play them together, we'll definitely find out that that's not the case. Our last bit sounds like when I play the drums. It's now possible to copy these. 
So we've got that event there. I can go to audio, advanced, copy warp markers from selected event, which we've done. Then we click on the other one, audio, advanced, paste warp markers, and watch the waveform when I do that. And you see it's jumped into time, and now the two of them work perfectly together. So that's copying and pasting warp markers between events. So related, I think, to being able to edit multiple tracks warp in the project window is the fact you can do multiple tracks in the audio editor. So let's say we'll just take some of this kit here. We can open them up in the audio editor. I'll get the left zone back. We'll go to free warp and you can see those have all got dragged out. It's applied that to all of those and these are, are not the same. So I won't go through a musical demonstration of that, but it, you can see clearly if we look at this and look at that in relation to each other, you can see that these have changed and those are staying the same. So you can just edit multiple tracks as well, which again can be useful if you've got, you know, maybe different instrumentalists who are locked in with each other but aren't locked in with the other things you're trying to put it in with. So this is another great improvement. That means it's just going to be much easier to do a lot of this stuff and it's going to work in the way you'd want to for a fast workflow. So the last section of this video returns to the multi-track drums seen earlier on. And as you can see, I've redone the edits that were done earlier on. And it's that you can have phase coherent audio warp editing. So this makes sure that the relationship between these tracks is accurate. So when you warp them, it's apply making sure it's applying the same kind of warp to everything so that multi-mic recordings, typically drums, etc., anything where you've got multiple mics, should retain the stereo imaging which is is present in them so this may not be the the clearest example uh it would probably work better on something where you had a recording where solely you were dealing with ambient stereo miking you know something where you'd had a coincident pair etc set up so you probably if you're listening on anything suboptimal you probably won't hear a huge difference between the two but you can turn it on and off so i'm going to play it without and then put it on. For me, it's not night and day with that, but the approach I normally take with these kind of things is, if it's the right thing to do, I will tend to do it, unless I hear something weird, and then I may uh, turn it off and see if it improves matters. But but certainly, if Steinberg are to be believed, then this should help improve any issues that you may have found when doing this kind of work without the phase coherence activated. So here I have a project where the mix down of what I've just done has been imported. So I've got one with it off. So this top one, which I'll color as red, and the bottom one, which is on, which I'm going to color as green. So we can see the two quite clearly. Now, this is with it off, as we just heard previously. And this is with it on. So in isolation, you may not hear that much of a difference, but there definitely is a difference. And one way to find this out, in case you don't know, is to phase reverse one of the tracks and then play them both together. So you heard a brief snippet of that. So this is actually the difference that it's making between the two. So you'll hear there's some difference, certainly. So you can hear that that's made a difference between the two. And that's the difference between the two in terms of phase coherence. So that's why the phase coherent one is, is different and hopefully should give you better stereo imaging on those kind of tracks. So, those improvements, are they worthwhile? Well, yeah, I think so. We haven't lost anything. We've just gained the ability to do workflows which typically were not possible previously. 
So now you can use warp markers with impunity on multi-track drums and other multi-track recorded instruments. And with the phase coherence option, you should keep stereo imaging as it was. This is a great step forward. I really don't see any downsides, although maybe the workflow could be a bit neater in a couple of places. But for me, I've already found it's it's made the kind of editing that I've needed to do, particularly during the pandemic because of people working in remote sessions, is much quicker and easier and gets a better end result. So for me, it's thumbs up all the way. As ever, hope you found this useful. And if you have, please like, subscribe, comment, etc. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.